A Child's Introduction to Greek Mythology, the stories of the gods, goddesses, heroes, monsters, and other mythical creatures by Heather Alexander, illustrated by Meredith Hamilton. Who's who and what's what? Do you like stories about heroes and battles? How about stories with scary monsters? Or do you like romantic stories or sad stories or stories with magic? If you answered yes to any of these, then you're going to like Greek mythology. Greek mythology is a group of fictional stories called myths created thousands of years ago by the ancient Greek people. Don't let the long time ago thing scare you. These stories are even more exciting and entertaining than most stories written today. People still tell these myths because they are good, really good. We're talking, keep reading them thousands of years later, good. What is a myth? The Greeks believed that they shared their world with gods and goddesses who had superhuman powers and lived in the oceans, in the air, in the forests, and under the ground. They were everywhere and were a part of everything. The gods and goddesses could be nice or they could be wicked. Sometimes they were helpful and sometimes they played tricks both on humans and on one another. Myths tell the stories of the relationships between humans and gods, goddesses and other supernatural beings. Why tell myths? Look outside. Do you know why the sky is bright during the day and dark at night? You probably understand that it has to do with the sun and the rotation of the earth. Do you know why there is a loud booming noise during big storms? It's a good bet that you can explain that thunder is caused by clouds bumping into one another. How do you know all this? Maybe from school or a TV show or book written by a scientist? Now, Pretend that it's thousands of years ago and people know hardly any science at all. Suddenly you see a bright light shooting down from the sky. You're way scared. What was that? You tell yourself it's an angry God in the heavens throwing down lightning bolts. Suddenly you're not as scared anymore because you have an explanation. The ancient Greeks created myths to explain the mysteries of nature and make them less afraid of all the things that didn't make sense. Myths helped create order in their world. Some questions answered by myths are, how was the universe created? Why does the sun rise and set? What happens when we die? Why are there four seasons? And why are there huge waves in the ocean? A game of telephone. Back in the time of the ancient Greeks, there were no TVs, movies, computers, radios, libraries, or bookstores. Storytelling was the most popular kind of entertainment. Everyone would gather around the storyteller known as a bard. Bards were traveling storytellers who journeyed all over Greece and told myths, often through song or poetry. Although they each told the same myths, each bard put his own spin on the stories. Some made the stories sadder, some sillier, and some scarier. Then, years later, a younger bard, recalling the myths he had heard from an older bard, would tell them to a new generation of listeners and put his own spin on them, and so on and so on. And just like in a game of telephone, with each telling, the myth changed a bit. As a result, today there are many versions of all the myths, and not one of them can really be called correct. Starting at the beginning. Greek mythology begins at the beginning, the creation of the world. The ancient Greeks believed that before there was anything, there was chaos. Chaos is emptiness and confusion. It's everything swirling around with no order. One day Gaia or Mother Earth appeared. 
Mother Earth was lonely because she was all by herself in the universe. One evening, she looked up and saw Uranus, the night sky. He was large and beautiful and his stars twinkled and made Mother Earth happy. Earth married the sky and together they had 12 children, six sons and six daughters. The children were the first gods and goddesses and they were called the Titans. The Titans were powerful giants. The youngest son, Cronus, was the strongest and bravest of them all. Mother Earth soon grew very upset because Uranus was cruel and mean to her children. She begged the Titans to destroy their father. They were all too scared, except for Cronus, who rose up against his father and destroyed him. Cronus was now the ruler of the universe, but he wasn't any nicer than his father had been. Before his father had died, he cursed Cronus, saying, One day your son shall take the power from you the way you took it from me. Cronus had a plan to avoid this. Every time his wife Rhea gave birth to a baby, he swallowed it whole. He swallowed five of their babies. With no children, he thought he had nothing to fear. Rhea was very angry. When she was about to have her sixth child, she knew she couldn't let her husband swallow this one too. She asked Mother Earth for help. Mother Earth told her exactly what to do. Following her advice, when the baby was born, Rhea quickly hid him in a cave on the Isle of Crete. Then she returned to Kronos with a large stone wrapped in blankets and presented her husband with the bundle. Kronos grabbed the baby and swallowed it whole, just as he had done with their other children. He didn't realize he had gulped down a rock. Rhea named her baby son Zeus and he grew up strong and healthy in the cave. Nymphs, nature goddesses, took good care of them, and a fairy goat named Almathea fed him sweet milk. Zeus was so thankful that when Almathea died, he used her hide to make a thick shield called the Aegis, which he would forever carry in battle. When Zeus was old enough, the nymphs whispered the truth to him, that his father had swallowed his brothers and sisters. Zeus vowed to find his father and defeat him. He left Crete and met Metis, daughter of another titan who was extremely wise. She gave him a magic potion to help him on his quest. He journeyed to Kronos' palace and secretly poured the potion into his drink. Kronos took a sip and threw up his five other children, all fully grown. Zeus gathered his brothers and sisters, Hades, Poseidon, Hera, Demeter, and Hestia, and together they declared war on their father and the Titans. It was a horrible, bloody battle that lasted 10 long years. After all that time, no one could declare victory. Finally, Mother Earth came to Zeus's rescue. She told him about six other children she'd also given birth to, the three Hecatonchiers and the three Cyclops. These six children were monsters, and their father, Uranus, had been so ashamed of them that he locked them away. When Cronus took power, he had also kept the monsters imprisoned. Zeus suspected that they would want revenge on Cronus, so he freed them. Zeus was right. The Cyclops, enormous creatures with only one eye right in the middle of their forehead, built weapons of thunder and lightning and gave them to Zeus. They crafted the trident, three-pronged spear, for Poseidon, so that when it hit the ground or the sea, the earth shook. For Hades, they made a cap of invisibility so he could surprise the Titans. Each Hecaton cheer had 150, 100 arms and 50 heads, which helped in battle. Armed with these powers and with the monsters on their side, Zeus and his brothers and sisters quickly won the war. He banished Cronus and told all the... He banished Cronus and all the titans to the underworld or land of the dead 
to be locked up forever. Guarded by the all-seeing, multi-handed Hecaton cheers, they had absolutely no hope of escape. It's all Greek to me. The Titans were huge giants. The famous ocean liner, the Titanic, the one that crashed into the iceberg and sank, was named after the Titans because it was the largest ship when it sailed in 1912. Titan children. Cronus and Rhea are the best known of the 12 original Titans. However, the three children of their brother, Iapetus, Prometheus, Epimetheus, and Atlas became famous for their earthly deeds. The story of man and fire. Prometheus and Epimetheus were brothers. Prometheus was born with a special power called prophecy that let him see the future. Early on, he saw that Zeus and the Olympians would win the war against the Titans. He tried and tried to tell the Titans to change their battle plans, but they didn't pay any attention to him. In fact, they told him to stop bothering them. Fed up, both brothers pledged their loyalty to Zeus. After the war, Zeus gave Epimetheus and Prometheus, who were the grandsons of Mother Earth, the special job of creating the first creatures to live on Earth. They used dirt and clay and kneaded them with water to sculpt the first man and all Earth's creatures. Epimetheus formed the animals, birds and insects. He worked fast and when he was finished, he gave each and every creature special protection. He gave the turtle a hard shell, the bear warm fur, the lizard thick scales, the bee a sharp stinger, and the cheetah incredible speed. Meanwhile, Prometheus took his time molding man. He wanted man to look like the gods. He gave him two legs so he could walk upright and be closer to the heavens. He taught man how to plant crops and tame animals. But since his brother had given all the gifts of protection away, he was worried that man had no way to protect himself. No sharp fangs, no poisonous venom, no pointy claws or horns. Prometheus asked Zeus to let man have fire, but Zeus refused. Fire was only for the gods, but Prometheus wouldn't listen. When Zeus wasn't looking, he stole fire from the heavens and gave the gift to man. The next night, Zeus looked down on earth and saw orange flames burning in the darkness. He roared in anger, causing the heavens and earth to tremble. He captured Prometheus and tied him with unbreakable chains to a huge rock far away from anyone who could help him. Every day, Zeus sent an eagle to feast upon Prometheus's liver, and every night his liver would grow back. Prometheus's punishment was to suffer this incredible torture for the rest of time. The weight of the world. Atlas had been the commander of the Titan army. After the Olympians' victory, instead of sending Atlas to the underworld, Zeus had him arrested. Atlas was the god of astronomy, so Zeus thought of a special punishment for him. For eternity, he would have to stand on the edge of earth and hold the weight of the sky on his shoulders. So the earth and the sky would never be able to meet again. It's all Greek to me. Today, a collection of maps of the world is called an atlas. The 12 Olympians. After Zeus and his brothers and sisters defeated the Titans, they ruled the entire universe. Think about how big the universe is. That's a lot of area to watch over. So Zeus and his two brothers decided to draw straws to see who would rule what. Zeus was given control over the heavens. Poseidon had power over the seas. 
Hades lorded over the underworld. The three sisters also claimed powers. Hera was the goddess of marriage and childbirth. Hestia was the goddess of the hearth and home. And Demeter was the goddess of the harvest. Even though they each had their own area to rule, Zeus automatically became king of the gods because of his wisdom and strength. He wanted a wife to rule by his side and chose Hera. But Hera didn't want to marry Zeus and told him no. He kept asking her and she kept saying no for 300 years. Finally, Zeus tricked her. One day he turned himself into a little bird and flew into Hera's window. Hera felt sorry for the weak bird and hugged it. At that moment, Zeus turned back into himself and Hera fell in love with him. She agreed to be his wife, but it wasn't an easy marriage. She was very jealous because Zeus later took several other wives in addition to her and often had other girlfriends. She went out of her way to punish those other women and their children. In a magnificent palace, high upon Mount Olympus, all of Zeus's brothers and sisters sat on thrones, except for Hades. He was happier below ground among the dead. Six of Zeus's children joined the gods and goddesses on Mount Olympus. Hermes, the messenger god, Ares, the god of war, Hephaestus, the god of fire, Apollo, the god of sunlight and music, Artemis, the goddess of the hunt, and Athena, the goddess of wisdom. Aphrodite, goddess of love, was also welcomed. These 12 gods were called the Olympians. One day, another of Zeus's named, another child of Zeus's named Dionysus appeared on Mount Olympus. Gentle Hestia, Zeus's eldest sister, gave up her throne to Dionysus so she could tend the fire in the hall of the palace. Have you done the math? The gods and goddesses count doesn't add up to 12. Why? Hades. He does not live on Mount Olympus, so he is often not included in the 12. Sometimes Dionysus is called God 13 or because she gave up her throne, Hestia isn't counted. Meet the Olympians, Zeus. Job, Zeus was the most powerful God. He was the ruler of gods and humans and in charge of the heavens. The chief judge on Mount Olympus, Zeus settled arguments between the gods. Nicknames, king of the gods, the greatest Olympian, the weather god, the cloud gatherer, lord of the skies. Symbols, eagle, because it can fly so high, thunderbolt, oak tree. Weapons, the Aegeus, a shield or thunderbolt. Powers, he could morph himself and humans into anything he chose. He controlled the skies and the weather. Home, Mount Olympus. Family, six child of Rhea and Kronos, Titans. Husband to Hera, she was the only god or goddess who scared him. Brother to Poseidon, Hades, Hera, Hestia, and Demeter. Attitude, he was the strongest, bravest god and usually a fair and wise ruler. However, he had a very bad temper and would punish gods and humans for bad behavior. He often got in trouble with Hera because he easily fell in love with other women. Did you know he ordered the creation of men and women? He placed all the stars and planets in the sky. He gave earth, rain, snow, thunder, and lightning, and he defeated the Titans. Hera, job. She was the goddess of marriage and childbirth and the protector of all women. Hera also ruled the skies. She is thought to be the greatest of all Greek goddesses. Nicknames, queen of the heavens, queen of Olympus, supreme goddess, the first wife. Symbols, peacock, cu peacock cuckoo, pomegranate, a symbol of married love. Weapons, none. Powers, she could morph mortals into anything or anyone. Home, Mount Olympus, family, daughter of Kronos and Rhea, Titans, wife of Zeus, sister of Zeus, Poseidon, Hades, Hestia, and Demeter, 
mother to Hephaestus, Hebe, and Ares. Attitude. Hera was very jealous, especially about Zeus. She had a bad temper if Zeus spent time with another female, and she constantly plotted her revenge. She spent much of her time on Mount Olympus spying on Zeus. How do you know? She turned Argus, her 100-eyed servant, into a peacock and transferred all his eyes to the bird's tail. The First Wedding The wedding of Zeus and Hera was the first formal marriage ceremony. It is said the wedding took place at the Garden of Hesperides, where an eternal spring forever flowed with ambrosia. The wedding was a huge festival with lots of feasting and gifts, the model for wedding parties today. Hera's favorite gifts were golden apples and pomegranates. Poseidon, Job. The second most powerful god on Mount Olympus, Poseidon was the god of the seas. He commanded the waters and all the creatures in them. He was also the god of earthquakes. Nicknames, Sea God, the Earth Shaker. Symbols, chariot pulled by four white horses, bull or dolphin. Trident, a three-pronged spear that he struck into the sea to cause a storm. Powers, he controlled the water and was able to dry up rivers or create tidal waves. He also caused shipwrecks and people to drown. Home, a palace under the ocean and Mount Olympus. Family, son of Kronos and Rhea, Titans, brother of Zeus, Hades, Hera, Hestia, and Demeter, father of the merman, Triton. Attitude, Poseidon was known for his violent temper which caused stormy seas and earthquakes. He was greedy and very much wanted to rule cities on earth. Did you know Poseidon created the first horses? Today, large capped waves, today, large white capped waves are often called white horses after Poseidon's horses. Hades. Job. Hades is the ruler of the underworld, the, pa the place where people were thought to go when they died. He is the God of the dead, but he is not death itself. He is also the God of wealth because gold and other precious minerals come from underground. Nicknames, the dark God, the unseen, the rich one. People did not like to say the name Hades aloud for fear it would draw his attention. Symbols, jewels, minerals, key, scepter, cornucopia, dark chariot, pulled by four jet black horses. Weapons, two-pronged fork, which he used to shatter things he did not like, helmet that made him invisible, battle ax. Powers, if someone entered the underworld, they could not leave of their own free will. If they tried, Hades would unleash his incredibly powerful anger upon them. Home, a dark castle in the underworld. Family, son of Kronos and Rhea, Titans, brother of Zeus, Poseidon, Hera, Hestia, and Demeter, husband of Persephone. Attitude, Hades was grim, very serious, and often in a foul mood. Gods and mortals were scared of him. Did you know Hades was not an evil god? His job was to maintain order in his world of darkness, and he was usually just and fair. Hestia. Job. Hestia was the goddess of the hearth and fire, nickname, the forgotten goddess. Symbols, the hearth fire, a circle symbolizing the center of the home. Weapons, none. Powers, none. Home, Mount Olympus. And she never leaves because she must tend the fire so the eternal flame never goes out. Family, daughter of Kronos and Rhea, Titans, sister of Zeus, Poseidon, Hades, Hera, and Demeter, vowed never to marry. Attitude, Hestia was the gentlest of the 12 Olympians. She was calm, trusting, and peaceful. Did you know 
A hearth is a large fireplace used for cooking or heating a room. In olden times, the hearth was where everyone gathered in a home. Demeter, job. She was the goddess of the harvest and in charge of crops, farming flowers and trees. Nickname, corn goddess, goddess of the grain. Symbol, wheat. Weapons, none. Powers, she could create conditions for a good or bad harvest. Trees and vines grew according to her will. Home, Mount Olympus. Family, daughter of Kronos and Rhea, Titans, sister of Zeus, Poseidon, Hades, Hera, and Hestia, mother of Persephone. Attitude, she was kind and gentle. Did you know Demeter and her daughter Persephone often dressed as humans and visited Earth? Apollo, Job, he was the god of the sun and music, poetry, archery, and healing. Nicknames, sun god, god of light, the bright one, god of truth, healing, god. Symbols, laurel tree, lyre, raven. Weapon, bow and arrow, power, he could predict the future. Home, Mount Olympus, family, son of Zeus and Leto, a gentle titan, twin brother of Artemis, attitude, he was known to be very fair, wise, and supremely handsome. Did you know Apollo used his magic to put an oracle, someone who could look into the future, in a temple in the city of Delphi? On the seventh day of each month, the oracle told the future to those who asked. It's all Greek to me. The United States named their first missions to the moon in 1969 after Apollo. Artemis, job. She was the goddess of the hunt, wild animals, and the moon. Nicknames, moon goddess, lady of wild things. Symbols, deer, all wild animals, hunting dog, cypress tree. Weapon, bow and arrows. Powers, she protected little children and animals. She could shoot her arrows and cause either disease or healing. She could turn herself and others into animals. Home, Mount Olympus, all forests and mountains. Family, daughter of Zeus and Leto, a gentle titan, twin sister of Apollo, asked Zeus to let her never marry. Attitude, she was fiercely independent and liked to be alone. She was also athletic and fast. Did you know one day while she was bathing in a stream, <clears throat> the huntsman, Actaeon, saw her without her clothes. Artemis turned him into a deer and his own hunting dogs ate him. Hermes, he was the messenger of the gods as well as the god of travel and of thieves. He guided the dead to the underworld. Nicknames, errand boy of the gods, master thief. Symbols, wings, winged cap, and sandals. Weapon, he had a magical wand called a caduceus. It looked like a stick with snakes wrapped around it, which allowed him to contact, hum to, which allowed him to control humans and other non-gods. Powers, he was able to fly between Mount Olympus, Earth, and the underworld. He was the fastest of all the gods, both running and flying. Home, Mount Olympus. Family, son of Zeus and Maya, a titan. Attitude, he was very tricky and mischievous. Did you know a great athlete, Hermes, was said to have created the sports of boxing and wrestling? Ares, job. He was the god of war and violence. Nickname, bringer of war. Symbols, spear, dogs, vulture. Weapons, shield, spear, golden helmet, burning torch. Powers, he was very strong and courageous. Home, Mount Olympus. Family, son of Zeus and Hera, 
brother of Hephaestus and Hebe. Attitude, a fierce warrior, he enjoyed fighting in bloody battles. He was not well liked or trusted by the other gods. Did you know he often traveled with his sisters, Eris, goddess of strife, and Enyo, goddess of discord, and his children, Deimos, god of fear, and Phobos, god of terror. Athena. Athena, Job, she was the goddess of wisdom and war. She oversaw all arts and crafts such as weaving and pottery. She was the chief goddess of the city of Athens, which was named for her. Nicknamed goddess of the city, symbols, owl, olive tree. Weapons, spear, shield, helmet, armor. Power, she could change shape. Home, Mount Olympus. Family, daughter of Zeus and Metis. Attitude, she was very wise and even tempered. She was also a great warrior. Did you know Athena and Poseidon both claimed Athens as their own city? The gods said whoever created the most useful thing for the city would win it. Poseidon struck a rock with his trident and made a saltwater spring flow. Athena planted an olive tree and won. Dionysus. Job. He was the god of wine, fertility, feasting, and agriculture. Nickname Bacchus. Symbols, vines, ivy, grapes, goblet of wine, bull. Weapon, a stick wrapped in vines. Powers, he could make people go crazy. He was able to change his own shape and the shape of humans as well. Home, Mount Olympus. Family, son of Zeus and Semel, a mortal. Only God to have a mortal parent. Attitude, he was a wild and crazy God who liked a good party. Did you know one day Dionysus was napping on a beach and pirates who didn't know he was a God captured him and brought him aboard their ship? The captain didn't believe him when he said he was a God. So Dionysus morphed into a fierce lion and changed the sea into overflowing vines. The scared sailors jumped overboard and Dionysus turned them into dolphins. Blinded by the light. Word got round to Hera that Semel would soon have a child by Zeus. Hera was beyond furious. She went to Semel in disguise and convinced her that Zeus should reveal his true self to her. When Zeus came down to visit Semel again, she made him promise to grant her one wish. Zeus was head over heels in love and promised Samel that he and promised. Samel asked to see his true form. Zeus groaned knowing what would happen, but a promise was a promise. He appeared to her in his true form and Samel instantly burned to a crisp. The fate of any mortal who looked upon Zeus. Zeus took the baby Dionysus and sewed him into his own thigh to grow until he was ready to be born. Hephaestus. Job. He was the god of fire, metalwork, and building. Nicknames blacksmith god, the lame one, lord of the fire. Symbol. Fire. Weapons. Hammer. Anvil. Axe. He built many of the weapons of the gods. Powers, he controlled volcanic eruptions and crafted the finest weapons, furniture, and jewelry. Home, Mount Olympus, family, son of Zeus and Hera, husband of Aphrodite, brother of Ares and Hebe. Attitude, he stayed away from others, spending long hours in his workshop. He was very gentle and generous, showering his wife with gorgeous gifts. Did you know because he was crippled and ugly, his own mother took one look at him after he was born and tossed him off Mount Olympus. Aphrodite, Job, she was the goddess of love and beauty. Nickname, foam born. Symbols, swan, dove, seashell. Weapon, a magical golden girdle or belt that caused others to fall madly in love with her. 
power. She could make any god or mortal fall in love with anyone she chose and often messed around in others' love lives. Home, Mount Olympus. Family, having appeared from the foam of the sea, she had no known parents. Wife of Hephaestus. Attitude, although she was take your breath away beautiful, Aphrodite was easily angered. Did you know Aphrodite has been the subject of many works of art? The most famous are Birth of Venus, painted by Italian, Italian artist Botticelli in the 1400s, and the statue Venus de Milo by Greek artist Alexandros of Antioch. Venus is the name the Romans used for Aphrodite. Gods galore. Now you've met the biggies of Greek mythology, but there were dozens of other minor gods and goddesses who lived on Mount Olympus. All these immortals had special powers, but they were less powerful than the Olympians. Here are a few famous minor gods and goddesses. Eros, son of Aphrodite, this young god of love shot arrows at mortals, causing them to fall in love. He is more commonly known by his Roman name, Cupid. The Fates. These three goddesses were older than the other Olympians. They determined the length of life, both for mortals and gods. Even Zeus had no say over the fates. Think of each person's life as a piece of thread. The first fate spun the thread of life. The second fate measured the length of it. And the third fate cut the thread at the right time, ending life. They were also called the moray. Iris a messenger to the goddesses. She traveled from earth to the heavens on a rainbow path and was called the goddess of the rainbow. Triton, he was a water god and son of Poseidon, a merman with the head and upper body of a man and the tail of a fish. He blew a conch shell trumpet to calm the ocean waves. Hebe, she was the daughter of Zeus and Hera and the wife of Heracles. As the goddess of eternal youth, she was the cup bearer to the gods. Her only job was to hold the cup of nectar, which gave immortality so the Olympian gods could drink. It's all Greek to me. The colorful parts of the eye is named for Iris, as well as the colorful flower. Nemesis. As the goddess of revenge, she helped punish those who had wronged others. She also made sure people who were too rich or too lucky did not stay that way for long. So the order of the universe remained in balance. It's all Greek to me. A nemesis is an unbeatable opponent. The Muses, daughters of Zeus and the Titan, Nemensoni, goddess of memory, the nine sister goddesses inspired mortals to create art, literature, and music. They liked to hang out with Apollo and sing and dance the celebrations for the gods. And the muses are Calliope, epic poetry, Cleo, history, Erato, love poetry, Euterp, music, Melpomene, tragedy, Polyphemia, mime, Terpsichore, dance, Thalia, comedy, Urania, astronomy. Nike, the winged goddess of victory, was known for running and flying very fast, and she held a crown over the heads of winners of races and battles. It's all Greek to me. Nike is the name of a famous shoe and athletic wear company. Nike. The Three Graces, the three young daughters of Zeus and the nymph Euronymy, they were goddesses of beauty, charm, and joy. They were attendants to Aphrodite on Mount Olympus and danced together at weddings. The Sky Gods, these three gods are brothers and sisters who control the lightness and darkness of the sky. Their father was Hyperion, a titan. Helios, he was the god of the sun. Each morning at dawn, he rose from the ocean in the east and drove his chariot, pulled by four fiery horses, 
through the sky and flew back at night in the west. Selene, she was the beautiful moon goddess. She had wings and a crescent-shaped crown that shed light in the darkness. She drove across the night sky in a chariot pulled by white horses with long manes. Eos, she was the goddess of dawn. She brought the first light of morning by riding a winged horse across the sky. Where in the world? Greece is a small country in Southern Europe by the Mediterranean Sea. Thousands of years ago, this tiny country was extremely important, giving the world many famous ideas, laws, plays, poems, and people. Down in the underworld. Deep down under the surface of the earth was the underworld, also known as the kingdom of the dead. The souls of people who had died were sent to this gloomy place ruled by Hades. The underworld was a land without hope, without joy, and without sunlight. It was a world of shadows. One, getting to the underworld. When a person died, Hermes led their soul or shadow down to the underworld. First, the dead had to cross the river Styx. Old greedy Chiron ran the one ferry that crossed the murky river. Only those souls who could pay him in gold coins were allowed to cross. Most Greeks buried their dead with gold coins under their tongue so they had money for the journey. No coins meant a person had to wander the shoreline for 100 years until they were eventually let in, the poor person's entrance. Once on the boat, it was their job to row. Charon only steered. Two, Cerberus, a scary three-headed dragon-tailed dog, guarded unbreakable gates at the entrance. Greeks often buried honey cake with their dead to calm the mean dog. Cerberus allowed no one to leave the underworld. Once you were in, you were in for eternity. Three, a soul then traveled along the dividing road. At a fork in the road stood three judges, Minos, Achus, and Ramadathas. The judges decided the soul's final destination, Elysian Fields, Asphodel Fields or Tartarus? Elysian Fields, a bright, happy, ever after island for heroes and very good people. The grass was always green, music played, and games were enjoyed. Asphodel Fields, a place of limbo for the ordinary people. This middle ground was not good or bad, just in between. Shadowy souls wandered about in all gray landscape. Every day was exactly the same for all eternity. Tartarus, a dark, scary place deep beneath the underworld for wicked people. The Furies, three horrible sisters, used whips and snakes to punish souls sent there. Supernatural Creatures and Beasts the stories of ancient Greece are filled with strange creatures. Some are hideous monsters, sure to give you nightmares. Others are enchanting, gentle, gasp-worthy creatures. Still others are the funniest combinations of man and beast you could ever imagine. The nymphs. Looks. They were pretty, graceful women who stayed forever young, but they did not live forever like other gods. Attitude. They liked to fall in love. They were usually very playful, though they also had a mean streak. Job, the nymphs were nature goddesses and lived in caves, trees, and rivers. Looks, sirens, the sirens. Looks, the sirens were three sea nymphs who looked like pretty girls with the wings, legs, and feet of a bird. Attitude, at first glance, these beautiful girls who played instruments and sang looked sweet but they were really dangerous tricksters. 
story they had the power to enchant anyone who heard their song their sweet song drove sailors crazy causing them to shipwreck off the rocky on the rocky cliffs of the sirens island it's all greek to me today the term siren song is used to describe something that is hard to resist pan looks pan is an ugly god with a hairy lower body cloven hooves pointed ears horns and the tail of a goat attitude he was very cranky and lived in remote mountains so he was seldom seen by humans family he was the son of hermes and a nymph his mother ran away when she saw how ugly he was leaving him to be raised by other nymphs job pan was the god of nature and protector of shepherds and sheep he was worshipped in rural areas story pan enjoyed chasing the nymphs to get them to kiss him he really liked one nymph named syrinx she tried to outrun pan but he was quite fast on the rocky hills when she reached the river's edge she begged the other nymphs to transform her into the reeds they grew along the river so he couldn't find her they did just they did so just as pan approached pan let out a deep breath of disappointment and the whoosh of air made the reeds whistle pleased he had found a new musical instrument he cut down the reeds and played them wherever he went it's all greek to me if a traveler happened upon his mountain cave pan would let out a blood chilling shriek causing the person to run away with an intense fear called panic this feeling is named after pan the satyrs looks these wild and hairy creatures had the top half of a man and the bottom half of a goat attitude these goat boys were real party animals always mischievous funny and ready to have a good time they usually hung out with the nymphs and dionysus hooray for the heroes in greek mythology heroes were normal humans who did big important things to become a hero back then a person had to be liked by the gods and have a superhuman talent such as running really fast tossing a spear really far or fighting monsters greek heroes weren't always nicer or better than anyone else they weren't perfect but they were loyal brave confident and skilled most greek heroes journeyed to unknown lands to complete a quest that seemed impossible once the quest was finished successfully the world was a happier safer place and the hero was rewarded achilles was unbeatable on the battlefield achilles mother a nymph wanted her son to be immortal she took baby achilles to the river styx held him by his left heel and dipped him into the water this magic coating made achilles invincible but when the trojan trojan prince paris shot an arrow into his heel the one place that was not covered by the enchanted waters achilles died he was the best and most fearless warrior of the trojan war it's all greek to me when we talk about someone's achilles heel we mean that person's weakness bellifron was the only one who could tame the flying horse pegasus heroic deed he killed the monster chimera with the help of pegasus heracles better known today by his roman name hercules was the greatest hero of greek mythology he was a supreme athlete with incredible strength and courage an ancient superman heroic deed he completed super hard challenges called the 12 labors of heracles jason sailed on a ship called the argo and was in charge of 50 heroes called the argonauts heroic deed to win back his throne he was sent on an impossible task to retrieve the golden fleece and he did it odysseus was a warrior during the trojan war his journey back home after the war took him 10 years heroic deed he came up with the idea of the trojan horse defeated the sirens the witch circe 
and the giants. Perseus slayed many monsters and founded the city of Mycenae. Heroic deed, with the help of Athena and Hermes, he killed Medusa the Gorgon by chopping off her head. Theseus was the hero and eventual king of Athens. Heroic deed, he saved the people of Athens by killing the Minotaur who lived in a tricky maze called the Labyrinth. When in Rome, the ancient people from Rome, Italy were called the Romans. Both the Greeks and the Romans contributed greatly to our culture in terms of architecture, literature, and sports. The Greeks came about 1,000 years before the Romans. Even though the Roman Empire would later control much of the world, during the rule of ancient Greece, Rome was just a small farming village. But their empire grew and they invaded Greece around 150 BC and took control. The Romans then adopted many parts of Greek life and they decided to worship the same gods, but gave them Roman names. Naming the planets. All the planets in our solar system were given names from Greek mythology. You may not recognize the names because they are in their Roman form. Mercury was named after Hermes. It is the fastest moving planet, just as Hermes was the super speedy messenger god. Venus was named after Aphrodite. It is the brightest planet, and its beauty is as striking as Aphrodite's. Mars was named after Aries. This fiery red planet looks as hot-tempered as Aries. Jupiter was named after Zeus. It is the largest planet in our solar system, just as Zeus was the most powerful god. Saturn was named after Cronus. It is the second largest planet and Zeus's father was fierce in their struggle for power. Uranus was named after Uranus, Cronus, Cronus's father. The greenish blue planet has the same coloring as the sky, which was what the god Uranus was. Neptune was named after Poseidon. This bright blue planet resembles the ocean waves of Poseidon's watery kingdom. Pluto was named after Hades. Although no longer considered a true planet, Pluto is the farthest away in our solar system, much in the same way that Hades was removed down to the underworld. The alphabet, the Greek alphabet is over 2,500 years old. It is not the oldest alphabet, but it was the first to use vowels, which made reading and writing a lot easier. This helped the Greeks write myths, poems, and other documents that still exist today. The word alphabet comes from the first two letters, alpha and beta. Today, Greek people still use the same alphabet. Our alphabet comes from theirs, but we've made some changes in the order and the letters. The myths. The War of Beauty and the Trojan Horse. Everyone, gods and mortals alike, was talking about the wedding of King Peleus and the sea nymph Thetis. It was to be a most spectacular party. Nearly all the gods and goddesses were invited. Eris, the goddess of strife, fumed when she wasn't invited. Eager to cause trouble, she snuck into the wedding and threw the golden apple of discord into the middle of the party. On the apple were the words, to the fairest. Hera spotted the apple and immediately reached for it. She was the wife of Zeus and extremely beautiful. At the same time, Athena lunged for the apple, knowing that her beauty was supreme. Aphrodite also flung herself on the golden fruit, for she was the goddess of beauty. All three goddesses pushed and shoved, fighting for the fruit. Zeus was called in to choose who should receive the title of most beautiful. Now Zeus was the wisest for good reason. There was no way he was going to get in the middle of the three angry goddesses and judge their looks. Instead, he passed off the decision to Paris, the handsome Trojan prince. All the goddesses offered Paris bribes. Hera promised he would rule Asia. Athena promised victory in battle. 
Aphrodite promised the love of Helen, the most beautiful mortal in the world. Paris accepted Aphrodite's offer and gave her the trophy or apple. Hera and Athena were furious and from then on became enemies of Paris and the city of Troy. The problem with Aphrodite's promise was that beautiful Helen was already married to King Menelaus. The people of Troy begged Paris to ignore Aphrodite's promise, warning him that the king would not give up his wife. Paris didn't listen. He sailed across the Aegean Sea to Greece, kidnapped Helen, and brought her back to Troy. Helen did not struggle, for Eros had shot one of his arrows at her, causing her to fall in love with Paris. King Menelaus declared war on Troy. He appointed his brother Agamemnon leader of his army. Agamemnon quickly gathered 1,000 ships and sailed to Troy to bring Helen back. The Trojans refused to give her up and a bloody battle began. It raged on for 10 years and was called the Trojan War. The gods and goddesses took part in the war. Hera and Athena were on the Greek side. Ares, the god of war, fought wherever the battle was the fiercest. He didn't care about choosing sides. He just wanted to be in on the combat. Aphrodite sided with Paris and Troy. After gods and goddesses became wounded, Zeus stepped in. This is mortal battle, he declared. He ordered all gods and goddesses off the battlefield and onto the sidelines. Troy was a difficult city for the Greeks to defeat. It was surrounded by high stone walls. The Greeks couldn't find a way in and the Trojans hid behind the walls, often climbing to the tops to throw stones and shoot arrows. Achilles, one of the Greek heroes, did manage to capture and kill many Trojans, and the battle stayed fairly even for 10 long years. The Greek general Odysseus couldn't take it any longer, so he came up with a sneaky plan. He told the Greeks to build an enormous hollow wooden horse. Inside, hundreds of Greek soldiers hid, including Odysseus. Then, Odysseus had the Greek ships sail away from the Trojan port. But before they packed up and left, the Greeks left the huge wooden horse on the shore as a gift with a note dedicating it to Athena. Peeking out from behind the stone wall, the Trojan people saw the retreating ships and figured that the Greeks had finally given up. The Trojans celebrated their victory. They lit fires, prepared feasts, and pulled the wooden horse inside their walls. Everyone danced until night fell. Once the people of Troy were fast asleep, Odysseus pushed open a hidden door in the wooden horse. Hundreds of Greek soldiers silently filed out, flooding the streets of Troy. The boats, which had not actually sailed away, but had hidden in a nearby cove, returned in the darkness. The soldiers in the city opened the gate, letting in hundreds of other soldiers from the ships. The Greek army fought the unprepared, sleepy Trojan army inside the city walls and quickly defeated them. Helen was returned to her husband, King Menelaus, and the Trojan War ended. Pandora's Box Zeus sat on his throne high atop Mount Olympus and watched men cook and dance around their fires. His anger made him shake, which made the earth tremble. The humans must be punished for accepting Prometheus's get powerful gift of fire, he declared. He knew just how to do it. He instructed Hephaestus to carve the first woman out of a block of white marble. Hephaestus, a master craftsman, molded her to look like his beautiful wife, the goddess Aphrodite. Zeus named her Pandora. Each of the gods and goddesses gave Pandora a gift. Athena, the goddess of wisdom, breathed life into her. Aphrodite, the goddess of beauty, dressed her in pretty robes. Other gods gave her the gift of kindness, peace, generosity, and health. Zeus then brought Pandora down to earth. The human men were amazed by her beauty and each one wanted to marry her, but Zeus called for Epimetheus 
to honor all your hard work creating the animals, I want to reward you with this beautiful bride, he said, presenting the fair Pandora to him. Now Prometheus had warned his brother time and time again that Zeus was tricky and could not be trusted. But Epimetheus was so taken with his new bride's beauty that he forgot everything his brother had told him. All he could think about was Pandora. The two were married. As a wedding present, Zeus gave Pandora a sparkling jeweled box that had been crafted by Hephaestus. Whatever you do, do not open the box ever, warned Zeus. Epimetheus brought Pandora to live in his house. He placed the box in a corner and quickly forgot about it. But Pandora didn't. Day after day, her eyes were drawn to the box. What's inside, she kept asking her new husband. It does not matter, Epimetheus told her. We promised Zeus never to open it. Pandora grew more and more curious. She tried to stay away from the box, but found herself making excuses to go to that corner of the house. She tried covering the box with a cloth to avoid seeing it, but couldn't help peeking under the cloth. One day, while Epimetheus was out, Pandora wandered in front of the box. Her fingertips grazed the top of the shiny jewels as she wondered yet again what was inside. The urge to know was so strong that she could no longer think clearly. One peek, she told herself. I'll just take one peek. No one will know. Very slowly, she opened the lid of the box. Out flew horrible, wicked things. Greed and envy swarmed around her. Hatred and pain howled in her ears. Disease, hunger, and poverty slithered and groaned, reaching and grabbing for her. War and death swirled in the air. Every possible misery had been let out into the world. Zeus had known that human curiosity would unleash these evils. What have I done? Pandora panicked. What have I done? Pandora cried. Panicked, she slammed the lid back onto the box, trapping only hope inside. Because hope remained preserved inside the box, Humans have been able to hold on to it and survive most of the troubles and wickedness that Pandora let out. Hope allows us to believe that no matter how bad today is, tomorrow will be better. It's all Greek to me. The saying Pandora's box refers to a gift that at first looks good, but brings about trouble. Greedy King Midas. Poor King Midas. The King of Phrygia was powerful and lived in a huge castle, but he wasn't happy. He dreamed of great riches. He was sure that if he had a lot more money, he would be a lot happier. One day, his guards dragged a drunken satyr, half man, half goat, into the throne room. They had found the hairy creature wandering in the king's prize rose garden. Satyrs were known to drink way too much wine and have wild parties in the woods with the god Dionysus, so it was common for them to get lost. Who are you? King Midas asked. The old satyr scratched his fat belly, belched, and said, my name is Silenus. The king recognized Silenus as Dionysus' tutor. He brought the satyr in, fed him, and took care of him. Several days after Silenus was feeling much better, King Midas took him home to Dionysus. I was wondering where he was, Dionysus said as he lounged in the shade of a tree eating grapes from a vine. Thank you for your kindness. I shall grant you one wish. What do you want? King Midas didn't even have to think. He knew exactly what he wanted. I wish that everything I touch turns to gold, he blurted out. Dionysus frowned. Are you sure? Yes, yes, I am sure, King Midas panted, just thinking about all the riches he was soon have. 
All right. Dionysus popped another grape into his mouth. You have your wish. King Midas walked home. Along the way, he reached down and picked up a twig on the path. It turned to gold. His eyes widened in disbelief. He picked up a plain gray stone. Immediately, it became a nugget of gold. The king whooped with joy. I have the golden touch, he thought. He raced home through the forest. He grabbed leaves, flowers, acorns, and they all turned into sparkling gold. The king was finally happy. He would be the richest man in the world. Back at the palace, he called for a huge celebration feast. He wanted meats, stews, fruits, breads, and pies. He wanted the best food in the kingdom. The cost didn't matter because he was rich, rich, rich. His servants set out long tables piled high with the goodies. King Midas sat on a golden chair to eat. He reached for a slice of meat and it turned into gold. He tried to ladle soup, but the broth hardened to gold. He grabbed a piece of bread, bit into it and screamed in pain. The golden loaf had broken his tooth. Everything King Midas touched on the table turned into solid gold. Oh no, cried the king. I will starve to death. King Midas's young daughter hurried into the great hall when she heard him cry out, Father, what is wrong? She asked and gave him a big hug. King Midas gasped. He had turned his daughter into a golden statue. Suddenly, he was no longer happy. He returned to Dionysus. Please set me free of my foolish wish, he begged. Dionysus laughed, but he was kind enough to feel sorry for the king. I will take back your wish. Go to the river Pactolus and wash your entire body. Wash away all the gold from your head to your toes. The king did as he was told. He could see flecks of gold floating on the water as he scrubbed himself clean. When he came out of the water, his power was gone and his daughter had sprung back to life. King Midas realized that he was now truly happy and today the river still sparkles with gold. It's all Greek to me. When someone says a person has the Midas touch, it means that person has the ability to make a lot of money easily. The 12 Labors of Heracles. Zeus and the mortal woman Alcmene had a son named Heracles. When he was born, the gods and goddesses gave the, gave the baby special gifts, strength, kindness, bravery, compassion, and courage. Hera refused. She hated baby Heracles because her husband had been unfaithful to her. Since she couldn't punish the all-powerful Zeus, Hera set her sights on his son. One day, while baby Heracles was asleep, she dropped two poisonous snakes into his crib. Just as their fangs brushed his skin, Heracles strangled and killed both snakes. Everyone was awed by his amazing strength. Hera fumed that she had been defeated by a baby. She vowed to get back at him. Heracles grew up married and had many children. Throughout the lands, he was celebrated for one heroic deed after another. Mortals and gods loved him. Hera had had enough. She wanted Heracles to suffer. Really suffer. She put a spell on him and he was overcome by a fit of madness. Completely crazy and out of his right mind, Heracles killed his wife and children. When the spell was lifted, Heracles was horrified to find out what he had done. He wept for his family. Then he visited the temple of Apollo. The god told him he must go to King Eurystheus and do whatever the king instructed him as punishment for killing of his family. The king also hated Heracles and gave him 12 deadly, impossible tasks to complete in 12 years. One, kill the fierce lion, an enormous ferocious lion with a hide so thick that no weapon could pierce it, lived in a cave with two entrances. Heracles blocked one entrance, trapped the beast, and strangled it with his bare hands. 
He then made a cloak from the hide, which he wore to protect himself. Two, kill the many-headed hydra. The hydra was a huge serpent with many heads that spat poison. Every time one of its heads was chopped off, two more would grow back in its place. Heracles asked his nephew Aeolus to help him kill the beast. Aeolus set fire to a branch, and as soon as Heracles cut off a head, Aeolus burnt the stump so that other heads could not grow. In this way, they destroyed the hydra. Three, capture the wild boar. There was a mean boar that roamed a snowy mountain and had tusks so sharp they could slice through armor. Heracles hunted the huge boar, trapped it in a snowdrift, and tied it in chains. Four, clean the filthy stables. Heracles was commanded to clean the stables by the divine Heracles was commanded to clean the stables of the divine creatures owned by King Augean in just one day. The stables hadn't been cleaned in years and there were mountains and mounds of rotted manure. Heracles dammed up two rivers, changing their flow, so they rushed through the stables, washing them clean. Five, drive away the man-eating birds from the lake. Flocks of monstrous birds with bronze wings, beaks, and claws ate the flesh of humans and terrorized a lake. Heracles scared them away by shaking a giant bronze rattle that had been crafted by Hephaestus. Six, capture the deer with the golden antlers without hurting it. The beautiful deer was the fastest in the land and sacred to the goddess Artemis. Heracles hunted it for a full year, finally capturing it unharmed with a net while it slept. Seven, steal the four man-eating horses. The horses of King Diomedes fed on human flesh. Heracles knocked out the stable guards and grabbed the horses. He killed King Diomedes and fed his flesh to the horses, which tamed them. Eight, capture the fire-breathing bull. The huge bull was terrorizing the island of Crete. Heracles, wrapped in his protective lion hide, grabbed the bull by its horns and wrestled it to the ground. Nine, fetch the golden belt from the warrior women. The Amazons were fierce women warriors, much stronger than most men. Heracles simply went to the queen, flexed his muscles, and asked for the belt. She was so impressed by the looks of Heracles that she handed it over. 10. Steal the monster's cattle. Gerion was a three-headed monster with amazing red cattle that everyone wanted. Heracles sailed to find Gerion, shot him with his bow and arrow, and grabbed the cattle. 11. Collect the golden apples protected by the dragon. Heracles had to collect three golden apples from the tree of Hesperides. Hesperides but no mortal knew where to find it. The Hesperides were the three daughters of Atlas, so Heracles tracked down Atlas, who held the weight of the sky on his shoulders at the edge of Earth. Atlas offered to pick the apples because if a mortal touched them, he would die. If Heracles would hold the sky while he got them. The three, the hundred-headed dragon laid on, guarded the tree. Heracles shot the dragon with his arrow, took the heavy sky from Atlas, and let Atlas pick the apples. 12. Fetch the three-headed dog from Hades. Cerberus was the scary three-headed dog that guarded the gates to the underworld. When the king told Heracles to bring him the dog, he was sure Heracles would never return to the land of the living. Heracles managed to convince Hades to let him pass through. With his super strength, he grabbed and held the wiggling dog and brought him to the king. The king was scared of the evil dog and had Heracles returned him to the underworld. Having completed all 12 labors, the god announced that Heracles was now forgiven for killing his family and would, and would be made immortal once he died. Echo and Narcissus. 
Echo was a nymph who loved to talk, talk, talk. She chattered all day long, barely stopping to take a breath. If there was no one to talk with, she'd have a conversation with herself. One day, the goddess Hera came down to the forest from Mount Olympus to search for her husband, Zeus. Hera was sure Zeus was spending time with the wood nymphs, and she was very jealous. Hera asked Echo about Zeus. Echo talked on and on about her day, the pretty blooming flowers, the birds who lived in the trees, giving Zeus plenty of time to escape. Hera was furious at the young nymph and said, you love to talk so much, but from now on, you will never start a conversation. You will only answer when someone speaks and you will not speak your own words. You will repeat only words others have said. From then on, Echo spent her days alone in the forest. One day, she spied the most handsome young hunter named Narcissus. Narcissus was so good looking that every girl and every nymph in the land fell in love with him, but he didn't fall in love with any of them. Narcissus only loved himself. On that day, Narcissus was lost. Anybody here? He called out. Here? Answered Echo from behind a nearby tree. Please show yourself, Narcissus called. Please show yourself, Echo repeated. She stepped out from the tree. Come to me. Narcissus waved her over. Echo's heart leapt with love. Come to me, she said and ran to hug Narcissus. As she flung her arms around his neck, Narcissus pushed her away saying, Stop! I do not love you. Get off of me. Heartbroken, Echo ran away from him. The farther into the woods she ran, the more she began to fade. Soon, there was nothing left of her but her voice. From that day on, her voice could be heard, floating through the woods and mountains, repeating the words of others. The gods were angry at Narcissus for throwing Echo aside so nastily. They sent down a magnificent pool of water that glimmered in the sunlight. Narcissus stopped hunting to take a drink of the beautiful water. As he bent over, he caught sight of the most beautiful face he'd ever seen. He kneeled along the edge of the pond and stared at the lovely face. Its beauty held him spellbound. Night came and still Narcissus sat, transfixed by the face reflected back at him. Day after day, Narcissus stared at the beautiful face, falling more and more in love. He tried to speak to the face, but when it spoke, only its lips moved. No sound could be heard. Narcissus stopped eating and sleeping. Soon he wasted away and died right where he sat, never realizing it was his own reflection he loved. A beautiful flower bloomed in that very spot and the Greeks named it Narcissus. It's all Greek to me. If someone is said to be narcissistic, it means they have too much self-love.